The French division of Ocean Software, whose main objective was to develop 16-bit titles for Ocean, came up with the character Mr. Nut, created by Philippe Dessoli, that had its original debut on the Super Nintendo back in 1993. A year later, a sort of sequel was released for the Amiga, this outstanding platform game with that same cute character that could well be a true systems mascot. A Mega Drive version was also planned and finished, but never released, so Mr. Nuts Hopping Mad remains as an Amiga exclusive and extremely fun to play with the Maverick. And staying in the cutie map land, Rainbow Islands is another fine example of a masterful arcade conversion for the Amiga. It's the sequel to Bubble Bobble, so Bub and Bob are back, but this time around, in their human form, and armed with rainbows instead of bubbles. And that's not all! The levels now scroll vertically and not horizontally like most platformers. We have to run and jump vertically to avoid being swallowed by the water rising from below. Each island has a different theme, but they are all bright and colorful, with a host of cute creatures, with the one and only goal of killing the main characters. Like in Bubble Bobble, when an enemy die, it leaves behind some fruity bonuses, diamonds and even power-ups, and when we reach the end of each island, an end-level boss is patiently waiting for us. After the huge success of the Great Escape video game on the ZX Spectrum, Denton Designs elevated the genre to a whole new level, taking advantage of the possibilities that the ZX Spectrum 128K offered, and produced this Where Time Stood Still, set in an hostile world where time seemed to have just stopped. Filled with dinosaurs, cannibals and other hazards, we must take our survivors through this vast landscape only possible due to the Spectrum's extra memory. Where Time Stood Still drank inspiration from this movie The Land That Time Forgot from 1975 and was initially available for the good old Specky 128K, the Atari ST and MS-DOS. Target Renegade made me fall in love for this genre. Back in 1988, it totally compensated for the investment on a ZX Spectrum 128K Plus 2 or Plus 3. It came from Ocean Software bearing Imagine's logo and was one of the first offering a true 128K dedicated version that would play music throughout the whole game. It was also, in my opinion, the first successful attempt on a two-player co-op beat-em-up game for home computers. In Target Renegade, we fight our way through Scumville, packed with its own inhabitants, known as the Scumbags. <laughs> yeah, I just had to say it. So we fight our way through these hordes of Scumbags towards a final level confrontation with Mr. Big. And that's pretty much it. No damsel in distress, no president of a big country to save, nothing. Just a final confrontation with that so-called Mr. Big. But let me tell you, playing Target Renegade on the ZX Spectrum back in 88 at home felt like the arcade in town had just moved inside my own house. Yeah, brilliant! I have so many fond memories of playing Cabal at the arcades and later on my good old ZX Spectrum 128K. I tried the Amiga version in late 1989 and I was, again, addicted to it. In Cabal we're behind enemy lines and have to fight through 5 levels, each with 4 stages in order to stay alive and reach safe ground. A friend can join in and the general idea is to move our character from left to right, shooting at all the enemy soldiers that comes running on from the sides of the screen. Pressing the fire button, we're able to shoot and move around that giant sight. Releasing it will allow us to move the character from one place to another, running or rolling along the ground. As you've noticed, also bigger things need to be destroyed, like tanks, helicopters and trucks. Use grenades to take down these tougher opponents, but be aware that our supply is really limited. 
for last, one of the most satisfying things in Cabal is the ability to also reduce those buildings to bits and pieces. So much fun and an amazing port by again Ocean Software. The minute I saw this game at one of my local arcade saloons, I was immediately glued to the screen, mesmerized with that so much action chasing down these criminals and ramming their cars a number of times, forcing them to stop. Believe me, that was so freaking intense! And while playing, I could feel the pressure and the support from all other guys waiting in line to play Chase HQ. Thinking of this, I believe that they just wanted me to fail, so that they could play. So the arcade conversion was made in late 1989 by Ocean Software for all home computers of the time, and amazingly, the ZX Spectrum and Amstrad CPC were considered the best versions, attaining high scores and reaching the top of the charts. I absolutely love Midnight Resistance on every single system to where it was ported. My favorite conversion is probably the one for the Sega Mega Drive Genesis, made by Data East themselves, but sadly, it was never released in Europe. Nowadays, I can play it using my homemade arcade cabinet, but back then, I could only enjoy it on the ZX Spectrum and on the Amiga. And it was awesome to see the arcade cabinet being featured in the second Robocop movie. Ocean Software grabbed the license and special effects was the team responsible for this conversion of such a highly popular coin-op game, at least here in Portugal. And I can't get this amazing soundtrack out of my mind, it's simply one of my favorites of all time. In this one, some nasty alien invaders have kidnapped our family. So, obviously, that our mission is to try and rescue them, going against a huge army of enemies, ranging from foot soldiers through to massive F 14s and huge floating heads that spit maggots. If you're familiar with the arcade original, you know that Midnight Resistance also offers multi directional scrolling and huge backdrops, ranging from winding mountain trails to massive underground complexes. The two player option remains intact with the clever use of joystick control, allowing us to fire in 8 directions, regardless of which way we're traveling. Collecting keys dropped by the enemies will allow us to improve our firepower and choosing the right weapon is crucial to advance in the game. It really plays like on an arcade cabinet, with huge and well animated sprites along with smooth 8-way scrolling. Impressive! The port of Toki to the Amiga was made by Ocean France. It's a highly impressive one and really hard to ignore. As I've mentioned many times before, we control this heroic primate as he makes his way through the various levels to rescue Princess Maiho from the claws of an evil wizard that is also the one responsible for our own appearance. Toki's main weapon are fireballs that he spits at the numerous enemies, but jumping onto the enemy's heads is another highly rewarding move to perform. It's not an easy game, so gladly, various power-ups can be found and collected, like the football helmet for extra protection. It's a beautiful platformer packed with tons of action, huge bosses and incredible music that, as said, can't simply be ignored. What an amazing movie it is, and one of the most superb adaptations from, again, Ocean Software, the masters in the business. They made a ton of money with this game, and the fee that they had to pay for the license was insignificant. As I've mentioned a couple of times, the arcade game from Data East was sub-licensed from Ocean Software and we can witness that just by looking at the marquee of the arcade cabinet in where Ocean's logo is stamped. Quite uncommon back then, and it's one of those memories that I'll fondly recall till the end of time. 
The ZX Spectrum game was one of the best selling ever and was number one for a year and a half, even staying in the top 5 from April of 1989 till February of 1991. And the 128K version of the game is the way to go, cause all levels are loaded in one go and has awesome music from Jonathan Dunn that revealed so popular that even Ariston used the Game Boy version on its on and on advert. And on and on. Besides video games, I'm also a huge movie fan, mostly from the 80s and 90s, and the first Batman film by Tim Burton is still my favorite based on this DC Comics character. The game follows closely the events from the movie and graphically it just has that dark and obscure feeling that the Batman universe transpires. Again, Ocean Software did an amazing job bringing the Cape Crusader to all home computers in late 80s. There's platforming action, driving, puzzling and even flying. And all the different musical pieces created for the game are also of extreme good taste and really fits like a glove into each level to which they were created. A nice touch was that when we finished the game on the ZX Spectrum, the score counter won't reset to zero, so I kept on playing it over and over till I reached the maximum score points possible. The game is that amazing, I simply couldn't get enough of it. A complete package of awesome graphics, sound and music. And what about Pank? Another masterful conversion by Ocean France. Both the sprites and backgrounds have been superbly designed, using full color to capture the bright and cheerful appearance of the original game from Mitchell Corporation. Even when the screen is packed with balloons and creatures, the action is still swift and smooth as silk. As for sound and music, these are truly faithful to the arcade coin-op game. It's one of those titles that we just want to have a go again and again. In Pang we embark on this journey through 18 different locations shooting balloons as we go. A number of rounds is played at each of the locations at various times in the day. The balloons, being balloons, bounce around screens scattered with platforms and ladders, so our mission is to simply burst the balloons destroying them completely, because these locations and their important landmarks are in danger if we don't do so. Shields and additional weapons will gradually become available to make the going a little easier, such as the Vulcan gun and the double harpoons. However, colliding with any of the various creatures that wander around disables the weapons for a short while. There's also a time limit to pop all those balloons, so better make it fast! Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Cheers!